You know, you watch a lot of theatre as a critic. I mean, a lot. Some of it's amazing, some of it's terrible. But there's nothing quite like the warm, familial glow you get from a school production. E equals MC squared was commissioned by Good to Great Schools Australia as part of their family engagement program and was performed at the Hopevale campus of the Cape York Aboriginal Australian Academy. You can still find it up online at goodtograteschools.org.au. Okay, why am I reviewing a school production in far north Queensland? Well, aside from it being a good way to remind everyone that theatre is about much more than fancy buildings and ancient scripts by dead white guys, there are some fantastic people who have worked on this show. The script is by Chris Conn. Some of the music written by David Collins White is recorded and remixed by Kim Bowers, who you may know as Busty Beats. But honestly, the names familiar from the professional theatre circuit aren't what's important here. What's important here is the opportunity for these kids and their teachers too to get up in front of an audience of their peers and community and tell them a story. The confidence it builds in them, the teamwork, the relationships, the socialization and the sharing in the communal act of theater. That's what I miss most about not seeing theater live. And if I'm honest, what I miss about making theater as part of a community. So E equals MC squared takes a Bill and Ted's excellent adventure approach to learning the history of modern science. Students Jeff and Sarah are preparing to present their science fair project unveiling the true meaning behind the most famous scientific equation of them all, E equals MC squared. They enlist the help of Jeff's little sister Laura, who is the Hermione Granger of the group, always ready with an answer and always knowing things like Einstein's that scientist with the crazy hair, to travel back through time to visit the moments of inspiration that led ultimately to Einstein's discovery. The actor who plays Laura has the stronger stage presence and a nice clear voice. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see her studying at NIDA in another 10 or 15 years. As they take off, using the dynamic energy activator to help traverse relativity and positionality, or death trap for short, they're joined by a fourth student, Hannah, and then find themselves in 1821 London. Here they witness Michael Faraday on the verge of proving his theory of electromagnetism. Faraday clearly has an inferiority complex as he goes on at length about how he's merely the son of a lowly blacksmith and that only rich people can be proper scientists and make real discoveries. However, the kids encourage him to believe in himself and he conducts his famous experiment with the pennies. Having succeeded in setting Faraday on his path, the kids doctor who their way forward to France 1773 to meet Lavoisier for a demonstration of the properties of mass, which is rendered as a ballet. And then to Switzerland in 1905 to meet Einstein and his wife Milieva Maric and to watch them put all the pieces together. Just as I'm starting to feel a bit frustrated that the history of science is so often portrayed as a history of white men, they swing back around to meet the largely unsung French scientist and innovator Emily du Châtelet, whose work contradicted Newton and was nominated 17 times for a Nobel Prize but never won. This point is driven home by a rap song about women in science performed by Dizzy Doolan. Is it the most polished thing I've ever seen? No, of course not. It's a school production. What do you want? They whisper to each other, encouraging each other to say their lines or move to their blocking positions on stage. They read from scripts, props get left behind on stage, and when they're removed, the actors have to rescue their scripts for them. There are missed cues and rough starts to the song sometimes, and the staging uses simple cartoony props. But the kids get more confident as the show goes on, the teachers in the roles of the scientists are very entertaining, and the music is a solid foundation for it all. It's honestly totally adorable. This is what theatre's for. This is what theatre is meant to be, a community event, rough, real, telling a story, being told a story. Even watching it on the laptop, I still get a reflected glow of the warmth, the support, and the fun in that room. At the end, they return home and revise what they've learned in a song with Einstein, and the show closes on a truly haunting song celebrating knowledge, wonder, and mystery, sung in the traditional language by some of the elders in the community.